I curse you. No matter what Job went through, he didn't curse God. We need to be more like Job sometimes. We need to understand that through the difficulty, I may be learning something. I may be getting prepared for something else to come. We need to understand that God didn't do this to you. Many times we make decisions. We make that choice. And we put ourselves in our own predicament. And we want to stop and blame it on God. Are we living in the right shoes? I deserve a better job. I deserve better. New house. I deserve good health. I deserve an expensive vacation. I should be able to get all these things. But really, do we? Do you? What have you done that you deserve that? What we deserve is judgment. What we deserve is judgment. But you know what? He shows us grace. And then like everything, the loving Father, he d d disciplines us for our good. He brings trials our way. But he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Suffering to make us more like Jesus. That's Hebrew 12. Working all things for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8. And so we rejoice in suffering. That's Romans 5. See, sometimes you got to put the word in your heart and then it meditate for you so you understand that this is not God's fault. Last place thinking can be used as the 11th hour. It affects the way you think about yourself and your circumstances. Last place thinking the other way was last in, terrible, keep bad. But in the eleventh hour, it affects the way you think about yourself and your circumstances. If I had a job that I can come work like one of the last people, first I was chosen, I was done want to work in the venue. Then I was paid what the vineyard paid me for. Only worked three hours, but got 12 hours worth of pay. Wouldn't I want to share that job with other people? Wouldn't I want to tell my brother, my sister, my auntie, come on, I got to pray some week and work. So if you stop for a second and understand that the vineyard is heaven. So wouldn't I want to be telling people what heaven's going to all be about? Wouldn't I want to be taking the chance to say, here's a job that you can work. And it's all about a mindset, y'all. It's not about how much I can work and do to get to heaven. It's a mindset. Jesus said, the first will be last, the last will be first. Are you acting like you wanted the last? Now, some of you know that we minister to St. Vincent de Paul. And part of our ministry is to you know, find churches for the homeless. We will want them to be in our church, but we, we will them to just help them connect up with God in any way we can. We, we, ain't, we ain't so proud that you can't belong to another church and, and, and us minister to you at St. Vincent de Paul. Don't matter to us. We want you to be part of the body. That's, that's our goal. So let's, let's, let's not boast at all about it. We want you to be part of the body. That's our task. It's funny, though, because sometimes, even though we're ministering to St. Vincent de Paul, we really don't make them feel like they belong. We really don't make them feel like they, they should be here. We have that first place thinking going on. You know, I've been in the church. If he sits in my seat, I'm going to tell him to move. You know, uh, I've been in the church and we're going to sing the songs we want to sing. We ain't going to let them sing. We're going to do things our way. I don't know why he's jumping up and down, dancing and going on. He know better than his church. Sit your butt down so we can get out. Stop and think about it. You think that, whether you say it, your face says it, your body says it. We should be loving. We should be understanding. 
We should say, hey, one day I could be like them. Matter of fact, some of us have come from them. Some of us ain't that far off from being homeless. We live paycheck to paycheck. Make it real. At any day, your faith can be challenged because God puts the burden on you. Watch him. He won't steal away. Even if they ain't got nothing, he'll still go. He'll still be the one you can look to and say, that is my servant. But we're not that good or elitist that we need to look down on our brothers and sisters for saying this the ball. We're not that good and elitist that we can't go when it's prayer walk day and pray with somebody. There's nothing. I tell you right now. Yeah, I don't need to be in a suit. I don't need to be have a hat on, a shirt on. If the brother needs prayer, all he has to do is ask, and I'm praying. Some of them don't even want me to pray with them. I'm praying anyway as they walk by. It's important for us to understand and know that we are the workers in the vineyard for Christ. We don't deserve any of it, but we get all of it. He reached way down and touched us. He reached way down and touched our soul. He said that you're not so low that I can't touch you. He said, it might not be you that I put in your life. It might be somebody else that I put in your life to show you what you can do. By far, some of you think you're tough and strong. You could be out there in the street doing all that stuff. Coward. Coward. Because you can't even stand up to Jesus Christ. You can't even stand up and say, he's my Savior. You want to proclaim on Sunday that you come to church. And just because you come to church and you hear a little word here and there, you think you say and you go back out sinning. That don't work. That's the wrong kind of thinking to have. It's first place thinking. So I encourage each and every one of you in my closing, I encourage each and every one of you that we need to have last place thinking. And the way we have last place thinking, we need to understand that we do not deserve the salvation that God provides. We need to understand that, you know what? It wasn't that long ago that we ourselves, those of you who are Christian, but that long ago that we ourselves was on last need. We ourselves was looking up and praying for, for God to come and do something, to intervene in our life. We need to understand that it wasn't that long ago, the summer revival, we decided, okay, I'm going to change. And I'm going to come up that middle aisle and have them pray for me and change my life. We need to understand it wasn't that long ago. But what's more important is we need to understand that there's somebody else out there that's in the place that we was. And we can bring them on up. We can bring them where they need to be. So I ask you, are you in the vineyard? You may be thinking about the vineyard. You may be wanting to be part of the vineyard. You may see things that, you, that would want you to say, I'm part of the vineyard. However, you know, you sit back and go, God, as much as I want to live right, for some reason I can't stop what I'm doing. As much as I want to do right, for some reason, I'm challenged. As much as I want to do right, I don't want others to know that I'm suffering. I'm scared. You may sit back and say, my marriage is shambles. I don't know where wins to turn. Turning the man won't help you. Turning your friend. I mean, I, I see married women turn to non-married women for help. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? But then I see men who have affliction and sin and they try to help somebody else. Brother, you come on. You can't tell me you're going to help me. You're taking me to the place I shouldn't be. Come on. We need to know that we are stronger because Jesus is with us. We need to know that there is nothing out there in this world that can defeat us because we have the Lord on our side. 
Not only do we need to know it, not only do we need to believe it, we need to live like we believe it. That's the problem. Then you can stand up and say, yes, I've accepted God. But then I say, are you living it? Are you living like you have God? Brothers come and say, you know what? I've been saved all my life, but I just need you to pray for me. And I'm like, are you living a saved life then? Are you living a saved life? And many times they sit back and go, well, no, I've had my challenges. I've had people come to me and say, you know what? I want so-and-so to change their way. They need to change. I've been working with them. I've been trying to talk to them. I just don't seem to be able to get through to them. They need to know. I'm living right. I want them to live right. I'm praying for them day and night. I said, that's great. Have you thought to pray to God for you to get the right words to say to them? Uh oh. I said, because when you pray like that, you can see the change God's making in your life. But you can see the words that I use are uh, meditate in my heart, and they're the words that God has given me to use to change that person. So every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, now is the time we want your people to walk bold. Now is the time, mighty Jesus, we want you to be strong. Now is the time, Lord, we want you to encourage, lift up, and strengthen. Strengthen the people in this room. Strengthen the people who hear my voice, Lord. Let them know that they can repent and turn away from the sinless life that they're living. Give them the strength, Heavenly Father, to walk forward. Give them the strength, Heavenly Father, to be bold. To show this world that they can't hold them back. That you are with them, dear Heavenly Father. Grant them the ability to walk strong in your name. Give them the desires of their heart, dear Heavenly Father. Let them know that you are here and you will never leave them. Let them understand that today is the day you are calling them to be chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Reach out to Heavenly Father and touch right in the ear of my voice. Touch someone today that they may be strong and come forward. Touch them that they may turn their life around, Heavenly Father. Touch them that you can challenge them to be bold, not only in this world, but in this vineyard. That you can strengthen them that they may be creators and they may go and get others. I ask you all to stand, stand to your feet, keep your head bowed, keep your eyes closed. Now is the time. Now is the time for you to let go. Let go of that turmoil. Let go of that sin. Let go of that demon holding you back. Now is the time to let go and come on forward. If God is telling you it is now time for you to move, it is time for you to come forward. He's calling you. Yes, he's calling you. Don't let Satan hold you back. Don't let this world and the worldly pleasures hold you where you are. Tell God, I'm coming for you, Lord. You might be someone in here today who proclaims to be a Christian, but you know you're not living the Christian life. Now is your time to come and rekindle your life with the Lord. And now is your time to walk forward and say, boldly I proclaim, Jesus is my Christ. I want to live right, Lord. I want to do right, Lord. I want to be right, Lord. I don't want to be first place thinker. I want to be a last place thinker. I want to understand and I want to develop my life for you. I want to be able to show others that it can be done. I've been through it all, y'all. I've been through it all. I've had my life taken away from me. I've been on death's bed. But God has never left me nor forsaken me. He told me what I must do. He showed me what could be done. I'm telling you right now, some of you are holding on to the wrong thing. You need to let it go right now. You need to let it go right now. You need to just let go and let God. Right now. You need to walk. Stop being scared about walking. 
Understand God is your strength. I ask now if you need prayer. If you need prayer, come forward. Prayers of the righteous of the name of the Prayer is what you need. Come forward. We will pray with you. We will touch you. We will bind. Jesus is our Lord. He wants you to be free. He wants you to repent. Turn around. Turn your life around. He wants you to belong to his church. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You're still in the crowd. You can be seated. Thank you. 
Somebody come pick me up. Somebody can come get me. Because we all supposed to be taking care of the babies. You understand? When you have questions, when you have doubts, you need to be able to find what we call an accountability partner in this church, in this body. Find someone who's going to help you stay on the straight and narrow. I often tell the babies, find someone who looks like you. Guys, guys, ladies, ladies. All right? We just want to keep it straight. Okay? But I encourage you to do everything you can because your testimony, God will use to reach others just like you. It's important for everything that you've gone through for you to be able to use that to bring more people into his kingdom. CC been through stuff. 
The stuff you've been through prepared you to be able to go get another CC out there. Michelle been through stuff. The stuff that you don't went through helps you be able to say to somebody, I know what you're talking about. I've been there. Sebastian. Well, how you doing, Sebastian? I'm glad to see you smile, brother. This. It's all about growing the kingdom. It's all about those who are last being first. Congratulations, you're part of New Beginning to be in the church. I want you to act like it. I really want you to be proud, but we're proud of you. Amen. Just want to let you know that there's clothing downstairs. You can help yourself to whatever it is. It's free. It's free. We have lots of clothing downstairs that you can help yourself to. And you are dismissed. Thank <laughs> you. 
sure that I said what he said in person, but what you don't know, I can tell you, you know, hey, I don't know that you didn't do the right thing. I think you don't have a lot of people. Oh, you got Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm <laughs> 